Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Starbound. Now, we are still on the Mako, still trying to uh, make sense of all of this. I'll tell you what, guys. I figure for a high lotl, I would really like for the bathroom if we could find three seashells and just set them like one, two, three. That would be the bathroom. I would put like a little um, counter right there with the mirror and three seashells, and that would be it. And I and those people who get that reference know we would never have to explain ourselves again. But I was going to do some uh, more decoration. I think I'm going to do most of that off camera. I've got some other stuff that I want to do today. As you can see, I moved the Death Star display here onto the bridge. Figured that was a very appropriate spot for it. But check this out. I am in the Gamma Coric Gamma system. And I found a new world type that we have not been to before, guys, and that is a dead planet. And I'm really curious to see what we have going on here. We've got some sunlight, wind storms, meteor storms, and big meteors. So this is probably going to be a horrible spot to go. It's a dead planet, so it would only make sense that it's deadly. But I kind of want to see what we can find on the surface, so... It may be nothing, it may be like the barren planets we see on the outskirts of the systems, but I've flown here in the Mako, had got a little bit of gas from the outpost, and we're going to see what is on the surface today. Hopefully we can find something a little bit high-tech, and we can use that to add to the bridge, and just decide what we're going to do with the rest of this place. To tell you the truth, guys, I really need to figure out what we're going to do here because otherwise, man, I will probably call it a season at that point because I'm just... You ever reach a point at a game where you're just kind of... Don't... You've reached the end. You know what I mean? Even if the game doesn't really have an end. I'm kind of feeling that here with this season of Starbound. So any kind of ideas you guys can give me, I would greatly appreciate it. Hopefully we'll get them in this video. If not, probably next episode will be the last one. Maybe at least until until maybe the game leaves beta. Whenever that'll be, maybe when I'm in my 40s. But uh, no, that's, that's a little too mean. But we'll just see what happens. And that looks lovely. It looks like the surface of Mars with like oil seas. But I got my trusty steel chair handy. And let's see what this planet has to offer. Let's set our torch down. And we need to be very, very careful. Oh, we got sandstorms right off the bat. Okay, so we are going to go ahead then and travel this way. Oh, wow. You don't even... I figure going with the wind, you would move faster. I guess that was not the case. Well then, I guess we will just go ahead and travel the old-fashioned way. And it looks like we've got some... Looks like an oil rig or a factory in the background. Now, I've seen you before. What are you guys doing here on this world? Ooh, we got mushrooms. Oh, I thought we had mushrooms. Hmm. Well, this looks barren, but there is life here, so technically... It's not a dead world. And there's grass. That kind of reminds me of... I figure this is what Earth would look like. In this... Um, version of Starbound in this world. Now, what is that? Oh, Wartweed. Kind of reminds me of Harlock Space Pirate. I don't know if you guys have ever watched that movie. Um, it's on Netflix. It's a CGI movie, kind of like Final Fantasy Spirits Within. But it's really, really good. Unlike Final Fantasy Spirits Within. And um, I really enjoyed it. And I think you guys probably would too. It has to involve a, a dead Earth. Kind of. I don't want to really spoil anything. But I have a lot of friends who've seen it on the anime section on Netflix and didn't watch it because it was a CGI film. But it was based off an old anime. 
of Space Pirate Harlock, and I highly recommend it if you guys haven't seen it. Of course, I have a soft spot for uh, piratey kind of stuff, so... Ooh, that was a long fall. I wonder what kind of ore we could get down here. Can we... Looks like there's standard cave systems down here. Hmm. We haven't seen anything resembling civilization yet. All we've seen are sandstorms. Hopefully we don't see any of those meteor showers. Like, literal meteor showers. And this is as high as I can jump, so I gotta use these clay blocks that we haven't used forever. It's definitely this place I want to go to if I need coal. Very Oh, we got bone fields. Interesting. Very Mad Max style. Even more so than the arid planets because we've got like the oil facilities or the factories in the background. Maybe that's kind of a commentary on why this planet is now dead. Hmm. And what do we got over here? Oh, there's a chest. Let's work our way through all the de dearly departed. Bone coffin, bone chair. And fortunately, the wind wasn't really affecting us. Th oh, okay, the windstorm is still there. I thought it perhaps had died down. And we just got more of you guys here. We're seeing we ha we're not seeing any original races like we did on the Oh, I am not going to jump into those spikes like we did on the dark planets or the planets of perpetual night. Hylodal skull. Hopefully they died a warrior's death. Hopefully they did indeed. Oh. Just saw a reaver. Saw two reavers. Ah ah ah. How about ye? Ooh, tough reavers, too. I really like that... That glaive that he's rocking. Can you drop that? Nope. Well, you dropped something. What did you drop? Uh, oh, it's a rocket launcher. I also found an interesting crystal formation. I'm not exactly sure... What that was. I found it on an alien planet. Or was it an alien... Alien planet, or did I... See, part of me thinks that I may have been to one of these. A glitch skull, throwing bones. And I just don't remember. I'd done it off camera. Yeah, I got crystal lamp, crystal bed. I don't remember if I may have gone to one of these planets before, or I found them on an alien planet. When I was looking for uh, materials. I don't know... But I do know this is kind of like Arid Planet Deluxe, and we need to heal ourselves up. Uh oh. And we got an Apex Lab. Now this might be an interesting place to find mechanical, technical looking stuff for our engine, maybe. What do you guys think? Let's take a look around here. It's like, the thing about it is, the, the thing that I think would, um, <laughs> the thing that I think would be a great addition would be one of these engines that keep you from farming stuff. Ooh, wow. That's interesting. This is a slightly different lab than we've normally f are familiar with. Can we grab those? Oh, please tell me. Okay, we have got to we've got to work our way to the top here. I really want to see if I can get that electrical background panel because if so, that would make an amazing thing for the engine. We'll just have to make sure that the lab is relatively monkey free. There we go. And if you're not coming after me, I'm not going to come after you. 
Okay, so we gotta jump. Hello? Ay, 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 ay. Engage. <laughs> Engage, number one. Another thing I'll ask you guys to give me in the comments, in case you feel so inclined, is... Who is your favorite uh, Star Trek captain? Were you a Picard guy? Kirk guy? Cisco? Janeway? Archer? You know, just all the, all the Star Trek captains. Who is your favorite? I have to say, I am... I, I lean I lean more toward Picard than any of the others because I watched a lot of Star Trek the Next Generation and he got into some really interesting um, philosophical debates and such however my my second second place believe it or not is actually Cisco and the reason that is is he was the most realistic Star Trek captain or at least the most human in terms of yeah, see, you can't even farm that, even if you wanted to. And we'll take care of you guys and see if this works. Sitting there fighting a monkey in a sandstorm. Alright. So let's get out of this wind. That buff should go, or debuff should go away. There we are. Now we'll see if this was worth all the trouble. Yes, plasma disc. Huzzah! Those look great on the engine. Hello, all your friends are dead. That's what you get for having a lab like this out in the middle of bone fields. But the reason that Cisco is uh, my second favorite captain, and him being the most human, is you guys need to watch an episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine called In the Pale Moonlight. Because here's kind of the reason that I like Star Wars a little bit more than Star Trek. And the reason that is, is um, Star Wars is blatantly a fantasy. Star Trek is also a fantasy in the regards to the fact that this perfect society and you can see it in the writing um, in the writers after like Gene Roddenberry died Gene Roddenberry created this perfect society where people try to um, better themselves and, and all this the thing about it is a lot of that is just kind of um, infeasible because of human nature and um, in the Pale Moonlight is a perfect example that there are some situations where Roddenberry's vision of a perfect man, or, you know, an enlightened man, does not work. It just, war, specifically war, times just does not allow that to happen. And how Cisco deals with a certain situation is very telling, and it's kind of the antithesis of everything Gene Roddenberry ever um, aspired humanity to be, but it's also the most realistic because there isn't a good, there's not a, there is a wrong choice, and you can argue that Cisco makes it in this episode, but at the same time, it's, um, you can't really blame him. So it's Chili Seed, huh? Just check it out if you get a chance. Um, in the pale moonlight, you don't really... The only kind of um, thing that you need to know is that the Federation is at war with a group known as the Dominion, and things are not going well. And this is with the Federation um, being teamed up with the Klingons, and they are still just getting themselves... They're still getting wrecked utterly and completely. And what length Cisco will go to to make sure that no more people are to stem the loss of life. But check it out if you guys get a chance. Let me know what you think of it. It's probably one of my favorite Trek episodes ever. Like, I watch... I love Deep Space Nine because it was a long, continuous story. And I liked Voyager, too, to a point. There are, Oh, okay. 
Um, I don't know if you were... Sorry if I killed you for no reason. Um, Voyager was good at points. Um, there was... I, I kind of think of in terms of how different the characters are. Because Cisco, Cisco would have had that ship back in it, back to the Alpha Quadrant in a year, considering how many situations that uh, Janeway had. I, I think Cisco would have found a way out of it, like quicker. I don't know about the card. I know Cisco and Kirk would have had uh, that ship back in Federation space in in relative no time. But then you had, wouldn't have most much of a uh, much of a series then. Ooh, okay. We had a little Dianoga on feet there. If you guys recognize the Star Wars trash compactor monster. Another interesting thing. Like, for those who have watched uh, Star Trek Voyager. They, in terms of like long-term villains, they didn't have a whole lot. But a lot of storylines focused on their holographic doctor. And be who is becoming, you know, self-aware and becoming an individual and, and things of that nature. Holy crap. Hatchling's breastplate. Egg. Small avian tapestry. Huh. Nice to know that commerce doesn't get in the way of anyone. So this is definitely not as dead as we would we were led to believe. But, um... I really wanted them, like, when they had all these conversations about the Doctor becoming self-aware and that he wanted to better himself, I really wanted them to bring in the actor who played Moriarty on uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, the hologram that because of a glitch and something that Geordi said, became self-aware and became extremely adept, a very good villain for Star Trek, and who wasn't, in some ways, a villain. I thought it would have been really cool to have the Doctor and him interact. But, not the case. I think my favorite Voyager storyline was, um, it's a two-parter, if you guys ever get a chance to watch it. It's called Year of Hell. It's It goes in directions that you haven't really seen Star Trek go into before. Think of, uh, it, it's got a 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea vibe to it. But, uh... It's got some surprises. I, I was very, very pleased with it. And I don't remember if I actually set a starting torch. I don't think I did. So, I don't know where we... Uh, I guess when I start seeing clay. And not... Uh, oh, okay, Sandstorm is over. And not Ron Perlman's character from Sons of Anarchy. I start seeing more clay, I know that we have come full circle. And it's okay, we're about to run out of clay. I've got a ton of cobblestone, actually more than I've had clay. And these are some huge mountains. Not finding much else other than, like, dungeons. This is not... Not nearly as interesting as the dark planets that we've gone to. Heck, even the uh, magma planets were a little bit more interesting. But I guess if these planets were super interesting, they wouldn't necessarily they wouldn't necessarily be dead worlds. So, I guess that makes sense. Hey, I just narrowly avoided getting my face eaten. And, ah, I hate when I have to do this. It's like heading up one of those avian, uh, airships. Especially when you can't jump as high as you're accustomed to. There we go. Ooh! The windstorm has stopped, which means either two things. We're going to be able to navigate this planet a whole lot better, or we're about to have fire rain down on our head. Ow. Got some nice green grass deposits here. Wonder if there's going to be any more biomes for us to explore. Ow. <laughs> My ear started itching, like, horrendously. Oh, wait a minute. 
You guys were hiding the chest. Go away. Teleporter core. Nice. I'm go ahead and grab that since those critters didn't have any need for it. I'm expecting all hell to start breaking loose. It's it's it is too quiet. Oop. For a planet that was supposed to have thunderstorms or storms of meteors coming down to kill anyone or kill everyone rather. I'll tell you guys the truth. Off camera when I was trying to get supplies. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Yep, this is the whole too quiet thing. Holy crap. It was one of those little bizarre um idol altar thingies. Fortunately, they could not fight the steel chair samurai and I thought I was about to die right there. Uh oh. Yep. Oh, this is the meteor storm. I actually got hit with one of these things off camera when I was looking for supplies and it killed me instantly. So I'll tell you what, we are going to evac. And that's probably the reason that the world became dead. Even with my armor and everything, if you get hit by one of those things, I believe it's a one shot. At least it was in my case. So, that didn't pan out well. I mean, we got some blueprints, which is cool for some stuff, but... Not sure what the future's gonna hold for us, guys. Um, just, if you can, leave me your comments about your favorite Star Trek captain and stuff that you want done here to the Mako. If I get some stuff, we will start working on it. If not, then probably next episode will be the finale. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, go ahead and click like down below, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help, and we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.